Hey everyone, Duke here, and today we're going over some tips, strategies, and loadouts for soloing the new dungeon, Spire of the Watcher. Before starting, rallying at a public event flag or on the moon will allow you to go in with full ammo, as there is no rally flag before the opening area. This video is going to be from the perspective of Warlock, but many of the encounter-specific tips and mods I will go over will work on the class and subclass of your choice. We will go over mods for each specific encounter, but I would highly recommend running solo operative throughout the dungeon. This mod will give you an additional 15% damage to all targets, and will help with both killing regular enemies, as well as getting through the bosses in less total phases. For the first area, I went ahead and took down the Cyclopses right at the start, just to have a bit of extra safety. The main tip I would give for this first area though, is to do all of the wires except for the very last one to complete each of the circuits. This will stop the extra supplicants from spawning, and can make this area much safer overall. Other than that, I personally ran Devour Warlock with Controverse Holds, along with Fatebringer, Null Composure, and Galahorn. But there really isn't any super specific things you're going to need from your loadout to get through this first part. The drop down right after the first area can be a spot for a lot of deaths. You can actually use these small ledges on the sides to slowly jump down and avoid dying to physics. I also swapped to Solar Warlock here for Icarus Dash, both for the extra safety to land safely at the bottom, but also for the extra maneuverability in the jumping puzzle coming up. For the first true encounter, the Spire Ascent, I stuck with the same loadout using Fatebringer, Null Composure, and Galley, along with Controverse Hold Void Warlock to make use of Devour while running around and shooting each of the Arc Nodes. There's really not too much to this encounter other than to take a bit of time to take out the adds before going into each section, and then to also keep out an eye for the Hydra spawns, because if one of them take you by surprise, it can end up taking you down, so make sure to take those down if you see them. One tip though is on the second floor, I would recommend making sure to not kill the Minotaur in the Lightning Room where both of the arc circuits start so that you never have to actually pass through the Lightning. Letting it come closer to you first and then killing it will allow you to easily shoot the starting arc nodes with your Arctrician without needing to go near the Lightning or past the Lightning in any way. Other than that, I would just recommend picking a side to go through and finish one at a time for each floor and to take your time. That's going to be a consistent theme throughout this dungeon, as unlike duality, there's no timers or really anything that puts you under time pressure, so taking your time and making sure to play your life is an extremely strong way to make sure to progress through each of these encounters. Yes, there's a timer on Arctrician, but again, those Minotaurs are going to respawn, and it's much better to play your life and just get a new 30 seconds of Arctrician than to try to shoot a node at the last second with your Arctrician and end up dying. Next we have the Achilles encounter, aka Garden of Salvation version 2. This encounter is where I would recommend to start thinking deeper about your full setup, including mods. My loadout for this encounter started with Wither Horde, which gave me an ad clear, as well as a way to proc both Explosive Wallmaker and Weaken Clear for extra boss DPS. Wither Horde is an extremely strong option for both this boss as well as the final boss, and honestly I wouldn't recommend anything else over it. Kalos Mini Tool was my primary of choice, allowing me to take down some sporadic adds, as well as a fast fire rate weapon to shoot the eyes for during DPS. Really any primary type weapon can work in this slot, but I also chose to run elemental armaments to give myself even more ways to make solar elemental wells, so I would recommend running a primary that is the same as your subclass. Funnel Web or Unforgiven for Void, and Ikelos SMG for Arc can be two other top tier SMG options in those cases. And finally, I ran Cataclysmic with 4th Times the Charm and Bait and Switch purely for DPS. If you don't have a Cataclysmic with this role, the easily acquirable Typen is a great choice as well. Just make sure that you do not run the normal god role of Triple Tap and Firing Line, as Firing Line will do nothing for you in solo content. Triple Tap and Focus Fury is going to be your best option, with Triple Tap and Frenzy another strong option, especially if you are worried you may not hit consistent crits. The main mod we haven't talked about yet is Well of Life. This is going to give you 10 seconds of healing every time you make a solar orb and then pick it up, and with elemental armaments making wells on mini tool kills, explosive wall maker making wells on wither horde and grenade kills, as well as elemental ordinance making wells on grenade kills too, you will have a multitude of ways to get this healing when you need it. This setup is going to work well across classes with solar hunters and solar titans taking melee willmaker to make use of their refreshing melee abilities. Void subclasses can make use of devour and invisibility while still taking advantage of well of life through explosive willmaker. 
As for encounter strategy, I'd recommend completing the arc nodes in a cross-like pattern. While not as intuitive speed-wise, the reason for this is that whenever you push down one bridge to complete a circuit, you are going to aggro the boss as well as harpies and goblins this direction. While you're here, being underneath the bridge to take out the spawning goblins is a good spot to have some cover and take out any of the close harpies before finishing the circuit. Do note that these goblins will spawn right before you do the last arc nodes on a given bridge, so this is a good time to take them down and take in your surroundings before jumping up and fully completing the circuit. As a solo, the boss is really only ever going to be aggroed to you, there's no splitting of the aggro of course, so using this spot under the bridge can give you some cover from it, and then immediately running to the far side to do the next set of arc nodes will give you a bit of time away from the boss before it comes over to you again. Also note that killing one of the two minotaurs is a useful tactic as they only respawn in twos. So by killing one, you only have one on the field to deal with at a time. If and when you eventually do need to kill the second one, it can be beneficial to then kill one of the two new ones that respawn so that you are once again only dealing with one minotaur aggroing you and shooting you when you're maneuvering around the map. Once you've completed all four circuits, the boss will come to you for DPS. This is the biggest benefit of Well, in my opinion, is that it makes the actual damage phase extremely safe. As soon as the boss gets to you and is about to open its eyes, pop down your Well and take down all of the eyes. Do note that taking these eyes down quickly is paramount, as the length of your DPS phase includes the time it takes to break the eyes, so the faster you break them, the longer you get to do damage. This is also where weak and clear is going to be huge, as you will want to quickly shoot a grenade launcher shot at the boss as soon as you break the last eye to debuff it and get that additional 15% damage. This will also easily proc bait and switch if you're running cataclysmic with it, as you were already using your primary before to do damage with all three weapons and get that 35% extra damage buff from bait and switch. Once this phase is over, everything will reset and you will repeat the process. Using this loadout, a five phase was pretty clean even with a few mess ups. With really solid phases, I think a 4 phase would be more than doable, but even if it takes you 20 phases, as long as you keep calm, take your time, and get the damage you can in each time, you will defeat this encounter. For the areas dropping down through the spire to get to the final boss, it's again just a test of patience. Take down the adds and play safe, and I will show you the spots that I stood in in order to easily take down all 5 nodes easily by yourself in each section here as a reference. For the final floor, I'd recommend shooting the node in the center first, or at least as one of the first ones that you do shoot. Then you can take down the arc nodes to your left and your right before circling around the room to get to the final two nodes. We're now at the final boss, Percy's. This part is certainly the most hectic part of the solo, but I've got a few tips to make it a bit easier. First, I'd really recommend becoming comfortable with where all of the arc nodes are for each potential circuit path. I have a two minute video dedicated to just these paths, which I will link in the description below. As for loadout, I'm running everything exactly the same as the previous encounter, except swapping Cataclysmic with an auto-loading Vorpal Weapon Hothead Rocket. If you can hit consistent crit shots on this boss with an LFR, more power to you. But for me, the ease of use and consistency of a rocket on this boss is a lot stronger of an option for myself. I'd also recommend Concussive Dampener here on your chest piece, as there's a crazy amount of AoE damage from the boss, as well as the onslaught of Supplicant Harpies, so this will give you that extra bit of survivability. Just as a reminder, the main mods we are running here are Solo Operative and Weak and Clear for the extra damage, Well of Life for a bit of extra healing, and Explosive Wellmaker, Elemental Ordnance, and Elemental Armaments to make Solar Wells. Fitting in Fauna Might into the build is something I considered for both of these bosses, but felt that I didn't want to overcomplicate things by needing to properly time when picking up the wells needed while also losing out on a bit of possible survivability. My big tip here is to use the back of the room to your advantage. Taking down the hydras from this room will make it very safe after each damage phase. Do note that some of the adds can still be back here after each phase and can sometimes come in through the side doors, but is about as safe as you're going to get during this encounter. Rotating from side to side will allow you to take down the Hydras and some of the adds, and once the Hydras are down, the Minotaurs will spawn in. My biggest recommendation to get this first Arctrician buff is to use the boss's aggro against it. By pulling it over to one side of the map and immediately going to the other, you will get a few seconds of a breather from the boss. Do keep an eye out though for the consistently spawning supplicants throughout this encounter. Once you're able to get the first circuit down and get the middle door open, 
the back room will no longer be a safe, but you will more easily be able to bait the boss and the adds around both rooms as needed. Throughout this encounter, making a big circle around the room can allow you to kind of outrun many of the enemies, including the boss, and give you a few moments of clarity while the enemies are trying to make their way over to you. One other thing I'd like to say is you do have more time than you think during this encounter. As mentioned before, there's no timers that can kill you, so if you're ever in a tricky spot, just keep moving and reset the situation. This entire encounter having so much hecticness and so many ads and constantly being shot is kind of meant to speed you up and make you feel super hectic, so definitely take your time and clear some of those ads that will also give you the additional benefit of dropping more ammo for you so that you will have ammo across the multiple phases you need to take down the boss. Once you've done both sets of circuits, come back to the original room and get ready to lock the boss in. Do note that the Minotaurs will despawn when the DPS starts, and there are a few times that they just kind of aggroed over to me in the middle, but I just avoided using anything on them until they despawned. DPS with Solar Warlock is pretty easy, just slam down the well and do damage. Applying Wither Horde first will give you the Weakened Clear debuff, and swapping between Wither Horde and an autoloading Rocket will allow you to never have to reload no matter the class you run. But do note that you will need a little bit of time on your primary of choice until you hear that click denoting that the auto-loading has procced. If you're running any other class or subclass, just make sure to get your super off during the damage phase as supers do do double damage to this boss. You may need to DPS from a bit further back so that you have a bit of cover if using something other than well or a bubble titan. The main goals here are just to do whatever you damage you can in the time allotted and stay alive. Just like the last boss, even if it takes you a bunch of phases, there's no enrage and no timers, so you have unlimited time to get this done. With the loadout I used, it was a comfortable five phase once again, with some room for error. I would recommend trying to have at least five rockets going into a DPS phase, as you should be able to get through five rockets consistently, and you don't really want to waste the effort of getting to DPS phase without having enough ammo to do as much damage as you can. Remember you can just run around the room clearing adds in order to get more chances for ammo. After defeating the boss, congratulations on completing the solo. Don't forget to claim the triumph while still in the dungeon, as there is a bug currently that requires this. I hope this video was helpful, and as always, thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.